This is uh, what I was most excited to get to, which is the actual message mapping. And what does that look like when you start getting into the messaging? Um, so talk to us about this. I see um, similar kind of mapping here, but what exactly does this mean and how, how is this going to help folks with creating better messaging? Yeah. So the first thing I'll say is like, this is a somewhat uh, watered down version of how in depth they get because I didn't want to like make it too crazy. So I took a real client example and I kind of like simplified it a little bit. But basically this client, they do digital transformation, which is like an uh, industry that is touching on how technology is sort of like rolled out across the enterprise. Oftentimes it's sort of like hyper cross functional, you know, it could touch a lot of different things. And so this client, it's like a public company, they have a sales force, but they're doing very little outbound and like the way that they're kind of set up is very, very, very old school. And so what we're doing here is sort of mapping out, they have like three core markets they work with. Inside of each market, there's about 13 different personas. And then any given of those personas, what we do is we just map out like, what would that persona potentially care about? Right here, I think I have like two examples for each. If I was, you know, if I'm a rep, I'm doing this as granularly as I'm aware of. Because then when I go write a campaign, I basically write these in reverse, where for me, when I go write a sequence, it's like a specific pain to a specific persona in a specific segment of a specific market, right? Because if I group by that and I run, let's say three split tests where I take three different pains, split them across the same persona in the same se segment of the same market, always you are going to see statistical uh increases on like one of those campaigns is going to outperform the others. Like it's going to be very, yeah. very, very, very clear. Like, oh, this phrasing resonates more with these people. Right. And as you sort of zero in from all of these ideas of what angles could resonate and start running campaigns, you start to just like X stuff out and be like, don't do that ever again. You know, let's try this one more. You know, let's try this more. Let's try to add this onto this. And it's basically like the map of what to run. So instead of every time I build a list being like, what list am I going to build? Like, what am I going to write about today? What should be in this message? It's like, no, like the, the plan's there. It's like run this angle, this persona, this segment, this market, do it a bunch, measure the results and decide what to do yeah. next. And if you just do that over and over and over, heavy throughput, right? Like it's not uh, careless. We are not trying to show up like, you know, not spend time writing. It's just all the time is bulked into this mapping. So by the time we're writing stuff, it's like super simple, right? So almost anyone looking at this could probably look at like, any of these personas, look at the two cells to the right and be like, okay, I'm going to write that thing to that persona in that market. And it would kind of make sense. Yeah, no, this is great, man. And I, I mean, that's, that's definitely something I recommend is like going through and yeah, thoroughly understanding what are all the possible angles, pain points for every single persona. A um, couple of things I'm curious about because obviously AB testing is really important. One of the areas I've struggled with is actually tracking my AB test. Let me know if you guys have ever done this before, but like you, if you try to AB test a different subject line, and then, you know, you're at a company for a while, three months later, you kind of A-B test the same thing and you're just not keeping track of everything in one place. Like that's a really, it, I, I very rarely see A-B testing done well and in a like scientific way. So are you, I, I guess my question is like, do you have a way of tracking that? Is it like a spreadsheet where where you're, you're tracking all these different A-B tests? And then do you have like a certain volume where you say, okay, you know, once it's been 500 leads or hundred leads, you can say, for sure, like, hey, this is a good thing to run with or no, or, you know, I shouldn't use this. Yeah, really good question. So definitely track everything. So like there's there's sort of this idea that like tracking outcomes is only meaningful if we have controlled for inputs, right? And so a lot of teams have these ideas of like open rates and reply rates and positive reply rates and like all these things. And they're like, great, what did you do to drive that? And like, we personalize them. And you're like, on what? Like, what are you talking about? What, like, where the data come from? Who did it? Like, all, nothing's controlled for. And so we have these concepts of like what we did to get an outcome, but very like you couldn't, okay, great. Go hire three new people, teach them what you did and have them get that same outcome. And you won't, right? And yeah. it's because the inputs are like incredibly randomized, right? And so a lot of this stuff is just like, if you control the inputs and then you log what you controlled for, and then you do, you run something that is like um, uh, similar enough to the other things you're running that they're measurable against each other. They don't have to be the same, just close enough. Right. And I tell people outcomes are like relative, right? Because like one market, you might send emails to a thousand people and get like, let's just say like 50 positive replies. And you're like, oh man, that was awesome, right? Maybe that's awesome, but maybe that's like one tenth of what you could do for that market. And they just happen to be like a really potent one. Other times you have people who get really low responses, but it's like, that's just the reality of the market you're in. And, and you can either like give up and quit being a business, or you can be like, okay, I have an uphill battle. I have a difficult, and either way, 
the right thing is like define the inputs, run yeah. experiments, measure outputs and follow where the sort of positive stuff, you know, whatever it is that you're driving for is coming from. And so um, the way I tend to do this, like I tell my clients, we produce four products for them in our services, right? It's like a targeting report. So we use like that tool Graphy, and it's basically like nice. the count of people that fit a specific pain persona segment market, right? Um, so it's like how many people, and then what is that combination of things? And they get that at the beginning of the month. It's like, Hey, we're going to do this. Then they get the list of those people validated. And then the copy that we're sending to those people. And then at the end of the month, they get an outcomes report. That's basically like that same first graph, but then we add sends, uh, replies, positive replies, and then the sentiment of every reply. Right. And what I just say is like, uh, very, like it's, it's, it's pretty manual. It's pretty simple. And it's 100% clear at the end of campaigns, like what you should and shouldn't be doing. I've never gotten to the end yeah. of something and not been like really clear, like either we're not going to do that again, or like, let's try more, you know, it's always really simple. So I think a lot of times people overcomplicate tracking, right? They try to get all crazy with tracking. And I think it's like, just control the input. So you, so you know what you're doing. And at the yeah. end, like, you know, I'm pretty sure reps are pretty good at like not wanting to do stupid things. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. actually usually want to do the things that work best for them. And so I think just if you, they give themselves a system of any amount of like true measurement where you're actually controlling for stuff, out outcome stuff will be a little bit easier.